All right, Maestro, you ready? Kick it. Hello. What's up, my friend? How we doing? I'm doing well, buddy, and uh, and a hello out there to all y'all in listener land. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Yes, hope everyone's having a great day. Yeah, I know I am. Um, we'll talk about that more later. Uh, Jeff, you uh, you took care of some business within the last couple of weekends here, and we didn't get to talk about it too much before. And for one, I know that you don't like to boast <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, but um, I think it's quite an achievement that uh, at your age, you've done so much, but the the one we're going to focus on uh, for some of this episode is uh, your trip to what you thought was going to be your final fight. So to speak, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, the by all intents and purposes, that's what you were, um, you were sending out to the universe. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and that, I know a part of that is always there, so you sort of, it forces you, right? Like, yeah. you, that's one way to commit is by saying it. Yeah. Especially if hundreds or thousands of people are listening, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, because then you, you're you putting, I guess, the realization of what you're doing, then you have the backing that others know. So, like, yeah, your, they're going to support accountability you. Accountability is, is there or not, depending well, on how you want it's not only accountable, but you know that they're going to support you in that decision yes. no matter what it is. Yeah. Right? If you want to just, just die doing what you want to do, they're going to support you. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I get some people. That's my so, <laughs> you, you're, you're, not, you're not dead. <laughs> you're still married. You got lots of support still. Um, and still walking on my own demise. Right, yeah, and we still, <laughs> we want you to come back, and we want you to keep coming back. Yes, so, so do I. I don't want to be in pain or anything like that, that's for sure. So would you mind sharing with us, uh, myself included, Yeah, uh, I guess the moments, the weeks, the months that led up to that, to the point that you were getting in the truck and you were leaving? Like, I want to know, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love to understand somebody that thinks that they're going to be doing something that they love for the last time. I'm not sure how you're not, um, I, I hate to say somber, because it's not somber. Oh, thought but, like what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah, man. So, yeah, please. Yeah, so, um, uh, two weekends ago, I participated in the first annual Justin Thacker Memorial Meet in honor of uh, my coach, Justin Thacker, who passed away um, last August um, 2019. Cool. And so, um, could couple, you, real quick, Yep, because this is a big part of your life. Could you please share with us some of the um, some of the the the, the things, uh, I guess, or maybe the the places that Justin was in, yeah, mentally that led to his eventual death. Um, so Justin was just an amazing man. I, I feel his intellect was just so beyond what most average people deal with that he could never turn his brain off. You know, and this is only yeah. what I can gather from our conversations because. I was not always at the gym oh, daily nobody, yeah, like, yeah. like everyone else was, but he literally, if I text him or emailed him, he goes, I already, he goes, I knew you were going to text me, email me today. And he'd already have the response. He goes, I already knew you're going to like, he could read your mind. Like it's it just insane. He was phenomenal with programming for like any sport with a barbell or just, you know, fitness in general. Right. And, you know, towards the end, cause I didn't get to make it out. Life changed. You know, I time it's just how we get get older and things like that. And I, you know, I guess some demons have come to him, unfortunately, and he yeah. took his life, which was sad. We were all shocked and you know, in awe of just like, oh my god. But you know, yeah. those are things that I don't think anybody knows. Other people are suffering from. No, no. Why yeah. would you? Why would you know? Yeah. We, I mean, that's something that you don't talk about because you're not proud of it. You're ashamed of it. You know. And so it was just one of those things. So. Unfortunately, yes, he is, you know, he took his life last year and um, he, he had affected so many people across the country of just his knowledge and the impact he had as a lifter in the sport, strong man, powerlifting. The dude was just a beast, insane yeah. to how strong, but his mental capacity and attitude in life were just insane. Like, yeah. learned so much from him. And it was an honor to be 
in the gym and be a member of Team Lab and, and be under him and still will always be, a, a, they call them lab rats, be a, yeah. you know, a gym member of the lab. Like, you know, he's created some phenomenal athletes, coaches, people who are still doing it, who've gone on to start their own gyms. But it was something that a couple of the coaches and his brother decided that, hey, his birthday was on um, last week or February. Uh, let's do the math here. Sure. Yeah, 20, no, uh, okay. I think February 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was on a Monday, so my math is correct on days there. And um, they had to meet February 29th, and they announced it a couple months ago, saying that, oh, we're going to do a memorial meet in Justin's honor, Um, something that they wanted to start doing. And I was happy to see they did. Um, Chris, his brother, made a badass banner of different pictures of him throughout his life, his list. They had his best totals of Snatch, his best total for Clean and Jerk up there and stuff like that. Like, um just some insane stuff. And so it was great to come back to lift with a lot of people I hadn't lifted with in a long time, see some of those people, um, see his brother, Chris, like that's a family that will always be a family, whether I can be there or not, you know, and then they same, you walk in, it's like, Oh man, how you been? Like you haven't skipped a beat. And so, um, I signed up shortly thereafter, uh, knowing that, you know, I got to do it in his honor, you know, whatever happens, happens. And I've been dealing with back issues from a car accident back in 2009. It flares up. Literally, it flared right up three days after competing again. Yeah. And it was like, dear God, you know. So, I guess Justin was washing over me and <laughs> put some magical touch to <laughs> keep the pain away. But uh, I heard he had. I heard he was one hell of a guy. He he was amazing, man. Just yeah. pleasure. I, I never, goofy, goofy and funny when he needed to be, but more so like business. Like, and he yeah. could bring the best out of you. When you thought you were like dead to the world. He'd always be like, how you feel is a lie. He'd like right. the things he'd like, oh, do a couple more. What? Yeah. Now go up. Yeah. Or I want you to do, uh, you know, this, like one kilo jumps for, you know, an imam for 10. What? I, oh I just got to gosh. this. And I like yeah, yeah. things and like, I got videos of him, like what he made me do looking back. Like, it's like, damn, I can't believe yeah. some of the shit he made me do or any of us do. And it's just like, damn. But he brought, he knew what yeah. you were capable of. And he saw in your head when you'd walk up to the barn, but like, get away from it. You're not ready. See it in your face. Walk. Focus. Or go. You're going to do it again. I didn't like it. It was good, but it wasn't good enough. Like That's an insane thing to have. And so he was just like a mind reader. It was insane with his ability to what he could do, his programming. Like, Thankfully, he's been interviewed on numerous podcasts. Um you know, like Barbell Shrug stuff, all sorts yeah, of different yeah. lifting things. So, like, and he's got tons of YouTube videos. His progressions, his teachings of the sport, like, will yeah, always he, live on. He's, I was just going to say, he's going to live forever. Yes, he yeah. will. And I will, things is, when I've coached at CrossFit gyms, like, when you were a CrossFit member at the gym, yeah. those progressions were his. Sure, Not like yeah. I created this. Right. It was Justin Thacker's ABCs of weightlifting. Yeah. And things that I learned through him. And so, you know, it was a no-brainer when they announced it. Yeah. It was just like, okay. I got to cut weight because I can tell Justin, he'd be like, what, the, what are you doing lifting at, you know, a 96 right. kilo class now when they, right. cause they redid the kilos. So I lifted at 89. So I had to drop about, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 pounds. Right. Cause I was just being happy, not having to cut lifting at a good weight. But you still know weight. how to do those things. Yeah. That's thankfully from your, well, <laughs> wrestling from 13 and, you know, then into yeah. the late, well, I fought until I was 31. So I know how to cut weight. It's, yeah. And thankfully, I have a phenomenal wife that when I decide to do these dumb things or <laughs> crazy things, she's like, yeah. okay, I'll eat with you. We'll stick to this plan. And, you know, we both get the results we wanted. So yeah. it is nice to have the support of my wife and my daughter. But she's like, yeah, you got to do it. And then I told her, you know, at least I got to do this. And I told several people that, you know, this might be the last one. Like, this is yeah. getting worse on my body. I don't, obviously, with age, but I don't recover like I used to. It's just because my back can't handle. Sure. So I have to, I've had to adjust my training not to train like, what Justin made me do when I was full blown, much healthier. It's okay. How can we still lift at this capacity to perform, but survive to be able to put on my own shoes and socks every day? Cause yeah, yeah. 20 years from now. Yeah. I, I gotta be able to do that. And I, <laughs> right. I take those things into consideration of how bad it gets in pain. So it was kind of a no brainer. And, you know, thankfully leading up to it, you know, track my food, date how I was supposed to lists were going good and you know, everything like that. I had, you know, it was a great week leading up to it. Day came and, you know, I was on point. I was a kilo under, weighed in. I was like, okay, cool. Just hung out, ate, and then just like basically going through my head the entire time was just have fun. Yeah. Like 
enjoy the moment. I fell in love with this sport because of CrossFit, and I reached out to Justin. I think it was late 2013. What do I got to do to qualify? He goes, what, what do you mean? What do I got to do to qualify for a national meet? What are you weighing? What are you hitting? And um, they had that's when they had the 84 kilo class, so I was a little lighter went because I was doing more CrossFit, and I was like, yeah, man, you know, that's what I do. And he's the one who goes, well, right now you could qualify. You just got to do a meet. Go get your USAW membership. Get yourself a singlet. Come to the lab and do one when we have one, or we'll go wherever you want. He goes, well, and then that was when I kind of started working with uh, Ursula Papandera from Texas Texas uh, Barbell Club. Yeah, um, she's one of the world renowned female lifters. Was she the, doing programming for you? Uh, yeah, Is she that, did my okay. original until I moved over into Justin, when I could right. have a schedule. I could right. go to the lab, and yeah, she's on the IFW board for the Olympics and stuff. She's a badass and uh, a level five uh, cert from. USAW, the only one in the world, female. I was going to say, I don't and, think there's many of those. And Justin was another level five coach. And um, it was that kind of like spawn, but it was like literally, you know, that entire week getting there, weighing in. Oh, cool. I made weight, sat with my wife and my daughter until the session started and went back and got warmed up and just talking with the guys that I had normally lifted with like on Fridays and Saturdays and just had fun. And yeah. it was like at the end, you know, uh, so uh, – I missed my first snatch at 112. That's 112 kilos. It's about 246 pounds and change. Uh, threw it behind me, hit the second one, then went up to uh, 115 kilos. It's about 256 pounds. Uh, got that up and then kind of just like lost it my hips and dropped it. And so I was yeah. like, okay, well, I hit my one snatch. Cool. Got 112, 246 pounds. Went on a clean and jerk, opened with uh, 137 kilos, about 301 pounds. Then I went to 140. It's about 308 and some pounds. Made that. And my final clean and jerk was 143 kilos, which is a little over 315 pounds. Hit all three clean and jerks, felt great, and, you know, got a 255 kilo total. And so for my age at 36, you're considered masters at 35 to 39, kind of like CrossFit. And, right. You know, and she was like, well, did you qualify for anything? And I'm like, yeah, I think I did once I look at the totals. And I qualified for Masters Nationals. I have to compete in a national meet to qualify for Worlds, but I have a high enough total that I could compete at Worlds, Masters, and the normal age group stuff, I can go and lift with yeah. 18 and to my age and still hold my own. And then it was just kind of talking with my wife. We were at um, breakfast the next day, and, well, why don't you look up to see what it is? And, like, where is it at? I'm like, oh, it's in Orlando. Well, when is it? Oh, it's in uh, April, you know, uh, middle of April. She goes, okay, well, when's the last day to sign up? Well, wow. that day, that Sunday, as we were talking before we got on, you know, uh, the mics here is that Sunday was the last day to sign up before like the final price increase. And that's, right. and then they got a cutoff and they'll no longer. And I was like, okay. And debated it. I'm like, should I do this? Should it I not? Like it was literally that day. It was literally the day <laughs> before like the hike increase before they're going to start cutting you off. And you uh, know what that means. Happening. I mean, somebody's yeah. trying to tell you something and it, it just waiting all day. Like, and that's what, when one of the last times I talked to Justin, that's one of the things that I was trying to convince him. I go, dude, how bad would it? I'm like, dude, why don't you lift again? Right. And he, he always lifted in private. He didn't lift in front of everyone because he, he had to coach everybody. And I try to convince him. I'm like, dude, let's do a master's men's team. we got some badass dudes between me, you, and right. Ben and some of these other guys. We can get Jimmy and, you know, these guys. We could we could make a pretty badass team. I'm like, come on, come on, retirement. And he goes, I don't know, man. And I tried so hard, and he goes, well, when are you going to do it? Ooh. And so and I was like, <laughs> I, I'm going to do it. And so I was trying to play the, you know, like devil's advocate of like, dude, well, I'll do it if you do it. Totally. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. And then – you know, injuries persisted in life, and I can make up every excuse of why I didn't do it all last year, big changes and stuff, but it was just like, okay, well, it's all right. it saw it in my head, and it, so it was like 11.50-something that night before the price hike and the deadlines of everything, and it was just kind of like, okay. I think it was like literally, I think, 11.51, 52. I filled it all out, submitted it, got my payment in, got my email confirmation. Thank you, you know, for registering for, yeah. you know, Masters Nationals in Orlando, Florida. I'm like, okay, cool. And I think it was just in my head that if I did hang up my shoes, I would still lift on my own, just not to go compete anymore. Because sure, yeah, the yeah. pressure and how much I put into my body to do this, let alone cutting weight, that's not the hard part, but it takes its toll because you're, you're restricting, you're doing. But 
also the time that, you know, rushing my family from one thing, then, okay, we got to go sit and I got to sit, wait for it. Cause the sessions take, you know, about two hours for the, our groups. Cause the, the right. amount of time lift and wait. And it's a lot like a wrestling meet. Yeah. It's just, right? so just you're there a couple yeah. hours and yeah. stuff beforehand. And then it was just kind of like that night, you know, the next day after the meet that night at Sunday. And it was just like, you know what? I had talked with him about doing this and I wanted to have a team with team lab of masters men to go and lift. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And so signed up and now we're prepping for that and maintaining weight. But it was, it's like the thought of like, even when I fought and I knew I was like, I was done, whether win or loss, I wanted to do it one more time. Yeah. I guess it's just something you come to terms with a piece. It's just like in my head, it was like, am I sad? Like that I don't go fight anymore. Yes. Um, would I be sad that I'm not going to go compete as a weightlifter when that day does come? Yes, but it's like the ath- athlete mentality will never die. I will have the drive to lift and do the things that I do. I just don't have to have the gratification of earning a medal or a rank or something from it. It does help, but do you think that your wisdom and your age has a lot to do with that mentality now? Like you've calmed things down up here, you've calmed things mm-hmm. down out here. Um, and now it's like, you know, I maybe I don't want to be pressured. Mm-hmm. into doing shit I don't want to do anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm only a human being for, as far as I know, yeah. uh, you know, a handful, uh, another couple of decades, hopefully. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe there's that self-preservation thing. I, I, I mean, think, <clears throat> yeah, something. Exactly that, right? and, and being a parent of, it's awesome to see the torch of, you know, my wife and I were collegiate athletes. Now the torch is passed and our daughter doing gymnastics and watching her, and it's so awesome. It's nerve-wracking as a parent because you can't control it, but that I like that my daughter came. I like that she filmed with her phone, <laughs> like my That's wife. Awesome. And because I, I block everything out when I'm lifting, like I don't hear sound. Same thing when I fought. My intro song that I picked, I wouldn't hear. I heard, oh, I know I, what you I, mean. I, yeah. I heard a complete silence into the ring. <laughs> and there was yeah. thousands of fun people at these fights and just didn't hear a thing. And it's watching the videos back of, hear my wife scream but then hear my daughter scream like yeah like it's it's surreal but it's those things like if you know this is the time to hang it up I think you just come to terms with it like yeah it's you know I love these sports of things I've done but I can still do them but if I'm going to do them I'm doing my own terms and not yeah. put my body through hell because like I'm not trying to have my wife put my socks on the shoes on me for me because like I literally some days when it's that bad I gotta like contort and sit in the ground to pull my legs to me just to I bet yeah you know you've dealt with the back yeah, stuff and yeah it's it's the worst so man. like you know I think it does come with maturity of calming the mind and like even when I was younger like I was always very athletic but to be number one was not end all be all like yeah right. it was great That's I've been good. ranked the top at stuff before in my life yeah hell yeah but cool well, Jeff I think that the people that strive for those podiums when they fail, mm-hmm. they fall. They fall off. They yeah. they go away. Um, you know, I think we talked about Jordan and um, and Kobe one night. Yeah, and how he was like, you know, he was asked, and I, I know I said this last episode, but you know, were you thinking about slam dunking basketballs or whatever, shooting like fadeaway jays? Yeah, in sixth grade, he goes, no, nah, man, I was play, trying to play baseball. Yeah, and he obviously had that mentality of just take it one game at a time, mm-hmm. and. It will eventually build, and you won't yeah. even know that you're there, right? And I think that's the same goes with anybody, whether you're a fighter or whether you're um, lifting weights, Olympic style, or whatever you're doing. If you really want that, I got to get number one, two, or three, you're not doing it for the right reasons. And you might get there, mm-hmm. but you're going you're gonna to kill yourself doing it. Yeah, no matter what you're doing, like most, of, you know, most people in life, you're not going to make a living from your athleticism. Yeah. It's the reality we live. But obviously, you shouldn't still. You should always still strive to be number one. That's nothing wrong with that. But if that's all you're doing it for, you will fall hard. And like when I lost right. the first time fighting ever, and you know it was years that I had never lost. It literally was one of the hardest things to deal with. My coach, I remember. Um, I guess it was a week. Yeah, a week later than my grandpa passed after I lost my first fight, and I think you know he came to the funerals. One of the two things, but I remember talking. He goes, "When'd you lose it?" I go, what do you mean? He goes, you know what I mean? When did you lose it? I know yeah. you did. And I go, uh, so I fought on a Saturday night. I go, it was Sunday night the next day. Literally just lost it. 
and he goes, how how do you feel? And I go, fine. He goes, because he knew that. You have to go through that, right? Internally, yeah, and he did too because he was a former kickboxing champion and after he lost the title and things, and then he goes, "When when did you break? Yeah. And it's those things like I put so much pressure on myself, my other martial arts coach too, is you put so much that you're putting goals so far out in reach that you're more than likely going to fail before you ever get them. And most coaches don't coach you out of that. Yeah. They don't coach you into a better situation. They're they're trying to tell you to get on the podium. Yeah. Instead of if you just live today like there's no more damn tomorrow yeah. and love what you're doing, tomorrow's going to be just as good. Yeah, but you thankfully know? my martial arts coaches saw that. And same thing, Justin, every time he coached me in a meet, what's your best meat lift in this? And he'd be like, whatever. And he goes, all right, we're going to go up one. You're going to do that. And I'm like, oh, no, let's go. He goes, no, let's have your best meat lift in snatch or clean and jerk. Right. What's your Why best not, total? Right. Go for that. Yeah, you got to get back there. Go for you first. Do better than your old you. Right. If that gets you on a podium, hell yeah. Now, if it's something more national, like I could see Justin in his head going, all right, you're going to go for this because we're going to go for broke to try and get like the gold. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But a lot of things you'd be like, well, what's your best? Okay, we're going to beat that. That he wanted you to be better than yourself. Sure. And, and then that, when it was time to step up to the big plate, he was going to pull that extra bit out of you to make yeah. you drive and, you know, get under whatever. And that's what coaching is. Yeah. Right? I mean, you see what somebody has and you try to build on that. Mm-hmm. You don't see what somebody has and try to propel them to what somebody else has. Yeah. Because that's impossible. You can't mm-hmm. do it. You'll never crack that nut twice. No. You never no, will. No, 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 no. No, you can't do that. When you strike gold, whether it's your company or a thought, or whether you're completely falling apart in shambles was your best day ever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, doing it and wrong, man. Yeah, you know, you know and I've, I've had my meets of lifting when I first got into it. I didn't get a lockout, and I missed the lift of qualifying for a national meet and all this stuff. Like, I've had those moments. You know, you all get, you know, being the stupid sure, yeah. sportsman-like conduct, and right. it just comes with age, like. Full of ego and pride. My Like, after my wife's like, you know. How are you thinking? I go, oh, I'm thrilled. I'm so happy with that. Like, just, I can't complain, you know? I may, yeah. may have only made one snatch, but I hit it. Yeah. And then hit all my cleaning jerks. But it's just those things, and it's, like, exactly like Justin used to say. It's like, wake up every day thinking today is going to be the best day ever. It is a lie. It's a crock of shit. But if you can at least attempt to think that every day when you get up, you will already have started your day off on a good foot of thinking, I'm going to make it the best day ever. I'm tired. Who cares? It's going to be the best day ever. I'm going to make it that. Well, obviously, you have to make that day, and that's just what I went in with that meet is I'm going to make this the best meet ever. Was it my best meet ever? No, but considering I hadn't lifted at a competition in however long, you know, uh, over a year plus, psh, I didn't care. It was the best meet ever to me, and for what we were there for, that's all that mattered, and I didn't care what it ended up. No, you and know. then when you walk out the doors of that facility, that's all that ever mattered. That's it. It's yep. done. You know, and somebody you see at the gas station, they know you, they don't have any idea, it just it went down. Mm-hmm. Nothing. So if you want or lost, who gives a shit? Just no. go do it. Yeah, and the same thing, like, uh, they had badass medals. It was literally this the, this logo of yeah, the shirt it's here. Pretty they sick, they yeah. made these in medals. You know, this is his oh, snatch, wow. snatch total, and then this is his clean and jerk, and they made medals to literally outdo that. And then uh, Jimmy, one of the coaches at the lab, goes, hey, man, uh, yeah, you got third place. Uh, you when do you want to come pick it up? I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, I was stoked. Just oh and I, I even did a little yeah. thing on my uh, IG is like just stoked talking about I got a medal. I didn't even care what place. Right. I just wanted one when I saw one of the other guys post what it looked like. I'm like, oh, dude, that's so badass. My like, cool, man. I'm like, damn. Ah. But then I saw the total. I was like, yes, I get one. I was like, I don't even care what it is because yeah. I just wanted one because now I have that like the shirt from that meet. You can't nobody. They can't take it from. Yeah. You. It's yours. You know, and all yeah, the meets yeah. I've ever done the ones I usually win like medals at is from that, at the lap and they're all hanging in the, my office and right. stuff like that. And they're right. all from there. And then I got all these, you know, the, the passes from athlete from the big stuff, but I was not a big guy in the terms of these competitions. Like I can right. qualify, but there ain't no way in hell I'm going to place. Cause these guys right. Are right. Yeah. Insane weights. Yeah. That's, that sucks, man. I, um, and at that point, I think that, Whenever I used to, whether it was competing at that level or football or whatever, um, I think that I never knew that I shouldn't be achieving, like searching for first. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Nobody ever told me, hey, dummy, you know, stop. Just enjoy it and get really good enjoying it. Um, So, I don't know. I wish that somebody would have smacked me on the back of the head. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, something like that. 
you get those, but like I've been blessed with, you know, my martial arts coaches to Justin and all the other guys who have literally been alongside my weightlifting journey and all the numerous people that he's had through that gym that yes, chasing the gold is what you should, but like you first and foremost, when you do something, you got to do it for yourself. If you're yeah. just doing it like no different than a job, or if you're living just to make all this money, you'll never get it. Cause that's all you're focused on. You're not right. focusing on the small things that lead you to the big picture. Right. And so like, that's kind of been my attitude. I enjoy the sport again because I'm not putting so much pressure on myself, but I'm doing it because I want to, you know, yeah, I'm not yeah. doing it for the almighty. Cause if that's all you're chasing it for, you just, you're just never in it for the right reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sucks. Cause generally I think you, you see people, they, they retire, they move on from sport mm -hmm. or whatever. And they're, they're just, they're never quite satisfied. Yeah. When and I, that's they, sh I when they should be, that, yeah. you know, like, they, and hopefully one day they will be one one day hopefully something breaks them mm -hmm. and they realize that they should be proud of themselves for what they did not yeah you know and that was like a big thing too is like when I got done like fighting or like probably when like a lot of you guys when you leave the military oh I don't do my life yeah. do you yes. know do, and I've I've told this to other people in the military I'm like when they get out I'm like you know oh man well what are you gonna do I don't know do I hate my life now and I go okay well when did you join the military. Obviously, it's going to be 18 or after. Yeah. Okay. Did you exist in those years prior to whom, whatever branch you decided to join? Right. Yeah. Okay. Who were you then? Okay. What were things you wanted to do then? There are some people that I are, have the ambition that I want to join the military, whether it's a family right. thing or you just have that is a calling to you, and that's fine. Yeah, but right. there, you are not made by just that thing. And I think a lot of like professional athletes struggle with that. And I think anybody who's done sports so or athletics can struggle. But I had those moments, I think, when I was younger. But it's like, I've told my wife, like, oh, I'd be great to fight. But, you know, I wouldn't do MMA again, probably do a kickboxing Muay Thai match. But, like, yeah. it would be pretty rough on me to do. Dude, those the kicks, training and those kicks, oh, my gosh. I think I could take the the – the brunt force of it, but the training alone, could my body or more my back withstand to get to the time I got to step into the room? Dude, how many rounds? I mean, seriously. Well, yeah, that's a, yeah, I'd be like, th I think Muay Thai is three. three. MMA would be three. Yeah. Championships, that'd be five. You know, so yeah, it's those gotcha. things. But like, you know, it's just those things of life. Like, I can still do those things for fun, you yeah. know, and that's what it should be. It's, you're still doing them. It's just at a different level, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's not. 11 anymore you can turn it down a little yeah because it, it's you can't live a life like that you're right man you're right you become a very 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 i'll say it a million times a very selfish person when you try to live at that if that is not your career you know yeah you can't do that and i did that for a little bit fighting with the lifting and all that and it's just like you can't live like that because i'm not making a money from fighting anymore yeah you know i was i was doing well with it i made money from it but I don't make money from lifting. Yeah. You know, you, no, you not don't, many no. of people. I don't believe anybody really at my age is unless but, they're like a big name. But what if you but, were a coach? Yeah. but see, I mean, like, because yeah. you've been in those shoes before. What if you were a coach like at that kind of a level where you're trying to prep people to go to worlds? Where yeah. You're trying see, to, then at those levels, yeah, then, you, you know, you could be a coach at a gym. Like, you know what I did at CrossFit. And those things, that's the thing I think a lot right, of Right, but people, I'm talking about you. Oh, well, could I? Yeah. <laughs> I have time. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, one day. Oh yeah, I would. I would enjoy it. Yeah, one day I could do it because it was like fun when I name to you know, Mickey. Yeah, Call when I was, Mickey. I was a. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's what I think of about every coach, like boxing and fighting yeah. with Mickey. So yeah, Sorry. but uh, yeah, it's it's just like that, you know. Like uh, yeah. I did at the CrossFit gym. That was my passion. It was fun to teach all the members the sport of weightlifting. Yeah, make them more well rounded in that. So then when they got into CrossFit, they just did that even better. Man, I love CrossFit as far as the movements and the workouts and all that stuff. But I got to say, it takes up so much damn time of your day that you almost cannot help but become a self-absorbed person. Well, you got to ma master a lot. I mean, oh my goodness, you got to be able to juggle so many things. But but that right there, it's almost a three-hour period of your day. Well, that's you Get what, there, prepare. That's what do your like thing. fighting was. It's a, right, it's a right. selfish sport. Yeah, like, and I know that like your friends and family are, are always like, yeah, okay, cool, that's whatever you're doing, but... Mm -hmm. Now, you look back and you go, wow, I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, and I, which was good for me. But now, I wouldn't, I would never do that again. I think I, it's good and bad. Like, it was good for yeah, the person at the time, <clears throat> but then I look at it now, being mature, like, thank you, wife. Thank you, daughter. 
My daughter was oh, younger, so dude. it wouldn't have been. You, you know, saw our concept. kids. Well, they yeah. were constantly there. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, both you and the missus being at the gym for, you know, an hour. Like, you'd come one class and she, and that's what yeah. Kelly and I used to do. We used yeah. to, she'd work out, then I'd go. I'd watch our daughter. She'd then go take her or do whatever. Yeah. And set trade off. But yeah, I definitely say I got more than she did. So, yeah. Well, thank you. I, here. I think. <laughs> I could say the same thing. Yeah. Except mine was doing it too. So we were both like, yeah. it was the same thing. Um, but I want to save something there. You were talking about how like fighting is a selfish sport, mm -hmm. right? Um, I want to talk about that more, but I know that we have to cut this episode uh, right about now mm -hmm. and then we'll come back with a part two. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, I want to dive down that rabbit hole a little bit. And I don't want to get the two episodes too convoluted here. So yeah, so be a lot. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and send you out here with DiBiase. Um, and uh, if you like them, check them out on iTunes and uh, I think Spotify and a couple other things they're on. I apologize, guys. Uh, I'll get it right sooner or later. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jeff, you got anything? No. Thank you for listening. Um, Appreciate cool. it. All right, guys, we're gonna send you out here, and uh, we will see you again real, real shortly. <laughs>